kid, when I was in elementary school, I was designated as an ADHD kid. Attention deficit hyperactive. That was a pretty cool shirt you're wearing. <laughs> represents everybody else and you have your own individual needs and everybody else has their individual needs now I want you to take these two circles that you have held up get, you get your hands back up get your hands back up get these take these two circles I want you to overlap them so that there's a little tiny spot in the middle it's like a Venn diagram <laughs> yeah yeah and the, what I want you to do is I want you to kind of brew it. See, there's a little tiny hole. And that little tiny hole is what I like to call the sweet spot. <laughs> and the sweet spot, get your minds out of the gutter, the sweet spot <laughs> is where the needs that you have and the needs that everybody else has overlap. It's not just about sport, right? No, maybe you're an artist, and you, you need to find a way where your needs to be an artist overlap with the needs of society. You know, how about we give a negative example? Artist, graffiti, you're ruining the view for everybody. Artist, commercial artist, painting the side of a building because someone asked you to, because they want a beautiful work of art? Sweet spot. <laughs> And one of the ways that we can only find our sweet spot is we have good friends. We train incredibly hard. We train three times a day, six days a week, 50 weeks a year, for four years straight. To give you an idea of what that feels like, get up in the morning, six o'clock, alarm goes up, boom, and you stumble out of bed. And no, you haven't been drinking. And you go, and you grab your spandex and you put it on. <laughs> and you make yourself a big shake, you know, fruit, yogurt, protein, greens, healthy fat, throw it all in, and you pound that big blender, as much as the blender can fill, pound that back. Go down to the lake for seven o'clock, you start your dry land routine. Then at 7.30 you go on the water. You don't get off the water until about 9.30 or 10. And you eat your second breakfast. And then you go to the chiropractor or the physiotherapist to put your body back together because you've just torn it apart. And you go for your second row from 11 to about 12.30. Nap for about an hour, hour and a half. Then go for your third row, which is either a row on the lake for two hours, or you go to the weight room for an hour and a half, lift some weights. Get a little bit huge. <laughs> And then you go on the rowing machine and you start doing some aerobic work on dry land. And then you get back home for dinner, eat your first dinner. Then you have about an hour, hour and a half to get everything together you need for the day. Then you get your second dinner and then you go to bed at around 8.39. And then you repeat. And then you repeat. And that's a grueling schedule. It's an awful schedule. And there's no way, there's no way that you could ever do a schedule like that if you were to do it on your own. In fact, that's where you need, that's where you need your right hand, right? In your right hand. The people that aren't you, who are your friends, who can pick you up and carry you along when you don't get it. He said, I seek failure. That's what he said. Like, how, do you be, how can you be successful by seeking failure? And this is why it's a gym. This is a new paradigm for you guys. I seek failure. And so I, like, I, like you, I was confused. So I asked him, What's, why? why is this? And he says, the only way we can grow, and the only way that we can increase opportunities for ourselves, opportunities in life, opportunities in our physical capacity, 
opportunities in our emotional capacity, opportunities in our mental capacity, is if we push ourselves to that limit and we start living our life in that zone that's uncomfortable, at the edge of our, what I like to call our capacity bubble. You can either have a small capacity bubble where you don't have many opportunities in life, or you can hover around the edges and get comfortable with risks and grow it and have a big capacity bubble. You see, the only way we actually know our limit is if we cross over it. In reality, we might think our limit is here. When our limit is truly here. And there's a great, great educator from Britain. His name's Sir Ken Robinson. And he has this quote, he says, if you never fail, you'll never produce anything original. If you think about it, look at the people who've invented something original, and think about our society. Think about how we grow. We grow and our economy grows by original ideas, new thoughts, becoming better. And if we're too scared to take that risk, to take that leap, to jump off, then we'll never find that. So to conclude, I'd just like for you to think about that thought and think about it. Because failure can be scary. And in fact, we can all learn from failure. So it's not good enough just to fail, but you have to reflect after you fail, learn from it, grow and let it go. Finish up with one final story. It was Athens 2004. We were sitting on the start line of the Olympic final. We were getting ready for the race of our lives. My team, my friends, we've been training together for the last four years, harder than humanly possible. And the race goes off. We haven't lost a race in two and a half years. We had the biggest goal, the biggest dreams in the world. We fell behind. We lost confidence. Across that finish line, and we were crushed. Our dreams, our ideas, they were nothing. And we sat there. We barely had the energy to pick ourselves up and row to the dock. We moved the boat, got to the dock, and we got out. We got on the dock and we started to hold each other, started to hug each other, to comfort each other. And we started to cry. Think about it. Eight big guys, all holding each other, all crying, all dressed in spandex. <laughs> but we learn from that. We learn from that. And the best way is you want to seek failure, but you also want to learn from it. We let someone else influence what we believed. So when we went, five of us went from 2004 to 2008, we chose to define what we believed. For the months surrounding the Olympic Games, no one on our team read a single media article. We didn't listen to what the media was saying. We listened to what we were saying. And that helped us. And we, after learning from that, we grew. We became stronger people. We became more confident people. And most importantly, after growing, we learned about the past because they're focusing on what was happening right now. So I encourage you, seek failure, take risks, and learn from them. Scantone.